Welcome to Wilson's Wild Ride, where we do everything RV and travel. If these are things that interest you, please subscribe, hit that notification so you never miss a beat. Today I'm going to be answering the question, how do I choose the tow vehicle for the camper that I want? Up next. How to choose the tow vehicle for the camper I want? That question has so many variables and it's, it can be very confusing. It's, um, you can go to your, your car dealerships um, and they, and, or you can go to your RV dealerships. Now they are only going to be able to help you with the products that they sell, right? I'm going to show you how I go about figuring out what I can pull. Now, on your tow vehicle, there's going, you're going to have a little placard that shows your payload and it's going to show all these things as long as your vehicle is, is equipped for pulling of any kind of trailer of, or, 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 or camper or whatever. Um, and the way you'll know that if your vehicle is prepared for that is you'll have, a, you'll have of course, your trailer hitch system on the back of your truck or your tow vehicle and you'll have your, your brake system on the inside. Now, if your vehicle does not have that, you can purchase that aftermarket. There are many places that, that, can, that can install it for you, um, but right now I'm gonna show you what, where our, my placard is on my truck. That way, whenever you go to look for yours, that's actually a really good place to start. Now, mine is on the frame in between the driver door and the rear door, and it's right here. <clears throat> now I'm going to break this down a little bit. So there are some there are some terms on here that you'll see GVWR. Now that's the gross vehicle weight rating. Now my gross vehicle weight rating is eleven thousand three hundred fifty pounds. Now that, that rating is uh, has nothing to do with towing. What that rating means is if I wanted to put a bunch of weight in the back of the truck, as long as I didn't exceed that weight, that includes the weight of the truck also. As long as I don't exceed that weight, I can operate my truck safely down the road. Now, I don't, you don't ever want to exceed these limits because that's, that could be very dangerous. Now, next thing is the GCWR. Now that one is 27,500 pounds. That's gonna be my truck, everything with the truck and the camper, all that added up cannot go over 27,500 pounds. Now, my truck with everything that's in it, with my toolbox and everything that's in it, with all my tools, it's going to, it weighs roughly 9,000 pounds. Now, if I subtract 9,000 pounds from 27,500, that's going to leave me right around, what, 18,500 pounds? So, by the way it looks, it looks like I could pull a, um, a camper that weighs 18,500 pounds. But rule of thumb, keep this in mind, um, when you're pulling any camper that weighs over 14,000 pounds and 43 feet long, it is highly recommended um, to pull that with a dually. Now, can you do it? You probably could, yeah. And I'm sure lots of people do, and flawlessly. But personally, I would not recommend it. That, that, that's what I'm saying about that. I wouldn't recommend it. Lastly, the, your payload. Now, you need to keep this in mind whenever you're pulling. So the payload, my payload on here is, um, let's see, it's 3,023 pounds. So that's pretty good. This is a three quarter ton truck. And um, so what that means is the, the hitch weight of my trailer, um, and our, it's, about, it's about 800 pounds for the hitch weight on my trailer, plus everything that's inside my truck. Um, all those things added up is the payload that I have. And it cannot exceed 3,000 pounds. So it's, I know that my payload is well under that. So. Keep that in mind whenever you are purchasing that tow vehicle. Now, if you already have the tow vehicle and you're looking for your camper, 
keep that in mind because nine times out of ten, if you if if you keep this in, that your payload in mind, then you'll 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 never go over your um, the maximum amount that you can tow with your vehicle. We went around the park and we found some examples of some not so good setups and some good setups. That looks perfect. Yeah, Is that truck okay? Yeah, that's a uh, that's a half ton truck and that camper camper um I guess the uh it's probably probably about uh I'd say maybe 6,000 pounds. Okay. And uh the payload that would be inside the payload and also inside the uh inside the weight. So yeah, I think that's that'd be that's a good setup right there for, for what you got there. Well, here's another one that I really like. Yeah, Cedar Creeks, the Silverback editions, those are very nice um, fifth wheels. Yeah, very nice. So they're pulling it with this truck. Is that I, safe? I'd be honest with you, I really hope that they're not. <laughs> okay. Because that is a half ton truck. And this that fifth wheel is, I guarantee you, at least 40 foot long. I would be very hesitant to pull it with my three-quarter ton. Not say I'm, I'm sure it would pull it, but I mean, if I had to go short distance, I would, I would probably pull it. But that's a half-ton truck. Okay. And there are limitations, and that is way outside the limitations. Well, the we've course. seen the we've seen the outside of limitations before. Absolutely, we have. All right, now this is going to be an example of a really like your, a perfect setup. This uh, Grand Design Solitude right here, it's about it's 41 foot, or uh, 41 and a half feet, I think it is. And um, this guy's set up. He's got a, a dual rear, a, du a dual rear wheel truck, also known as a dually. And uh, it's the this is the 3500 Denali HD, and he he is set up perfectly to pull this. Now the only thing, the only bad thing about the only bad thing about a dually is whenever, if you're trying to go through a, a drive through or if you're going into like a parking garage or like a downtown city street where they're narrow, those things are going to be very challenging in those situations, which does not make those particular trucks a great daily driver. Um, that's why we stuck with the single rear wheel. Um, kind of limits us to certain certain um, RVs that we can pull but it just makes sense because it's just it's just me and me and my wife so that's all we need is that one truck you know so it just makes sense for us to go with the single rear wheel now like I said with that we, we have to be a little choosier we have to we have to choose the right size um, RV for what we have well, that so, looks, the that way is, they've got it going on, yes, it that, looks very nice. Well, Grand Design makes a very good product. Yeah, this one right here is almost 45 feet. Um, it's a toy hauler, and it has three axles. Um, you should never hook up a three-quarter ton truck to any fifth wheel that has three axles. That, that, is, that is absolutely a, a dually pulling you have to pull that with a dually. There's just there's no there's no wow. other option. It's I mean, really big. So your rule of thumb is when I like something, if it has three wheels, I can't have it. That's correct. I'm sorry. Because, okay. Okay. So earlier, honey, I showed you that black um, Denali HD that that dually. This one here is also a one ton truck, just like that one. But this one's not a dually. This is a this is the single rear wheel um, one ton. Can it still pull something that big? It absolutely can. The only difference, the only difference is it does not have that extra wide stance in the back end. So it may not be as stable as that truck, but the pulling power and the, and the, um, and the suspension, it has the suspension of that same, of, of a, of a, it's a one ton truck. It has a different suspension than a three quarter ton truck. It's a little tighter. It's a little stronger. But the only difference is it's not a dually. 
and the dually gives you that extra that extra stability when you're whenever when you get hit with those wind gusts like out west remember we, we mm -hmm. got hit by that so yeah um, yeah. okay. So that right there will, will help out a lot with, with the dually will help out a lot with that. Even though this one right here, yes, you can pull those, you can pull those trailers um, that weigh 14,000 pounds. Um, and, and, and even, and you can even pull them that weigh, that, that are over 43 feet. You can still pull them with that too. I would feel more comfortable pulling it with the dually though myself just because you have more back there it is it is more stable and th than that but it definitely it definitely can handle it well this is a nice setup it is that is a really nice truck it's a three-quarter ton f-250 with the um, montana high country that high country is either a 37 or a 38 foot fifth wheel <clears throat> now that particular fifth wheel, I, I've even looked at, and it's that is, I really like that one a lot. Um, that one is well within his his range of for pulling. That one right there, he will be, he will enjoy pulling that across the country. But that one right there, he wouldn't even know that was behind him. He he would just keep right on going and, and not even realize it. Um, is yeah, that truck a diesel he's got? Um, yes, it is. Six-point liter power stroke diesel that Ford makes. Yeah, um, and what's the difference between a diesel and a gas? All right, so there's there's several. So your gas is going to be, your gas three-quarter tons and stuff, they're going to be cheaper to get into um, when you go to purchase them. Um, and then also your, your the, the gas is going to be cheaper, um, maintenance is going to be cheaper, um, and that, that's about where it ends because diesels, yes, diesels, you're going to pay a little more for them when you put, when you purchase, you are going to pay a little bit more at the pump for, for the, for your diesel. And then on top of that, your maintenance is going to cost a little bit more, but you're going to have more power, the longevity of the, of the engine. Um, you can get, you can get upwards of 850,000 to a million miles. It, as long as you if as long as you maintain um, that the vehicle properly um, you, you take care of all the maintenance when it's required um, it, 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 it'll it'll just keep right on going forever that and, they, and that's why they cost more that's exactly why they cost more they have more power you'll notice whenever you set your cruise control when you set your cruise control and you start going up a mountain um, and, and those things you they may they may you know drop to a lower gear but you know to, to continue to go that speed but you won't even realize it you, you won't you won't hear it in the engine you won't feel it in the transmission it just goes but you know what i like i that? like that we get to go through the um different car at the at the gas station we get to go through the truckers now we have that is awesome too because like when you come when you come in off the interstate just like you said you having a diesel and you're pulling a, a fifth wheel or a travel trailer or whatever and you see all the congestion of, of the cars trying to get gas at the gas pumps you can ride right by them and go right over there where the big rigs go especially at our pilot fall in line yeah pilot or flying J or you know yep. pull, pull right in there with them guys and fill up and then take care of your business and head on out thanks for watching if you have any suggestions or any questions please leave them in the comments we'd love to hear from you once again, don't forget to enjoy the ride.